You're listening to Blue Jays Nation Radio with Cam Lewis and Tyler Uremchuk, a member of the Nation Network of Podcasts and delivered by DoorDash. Episode 116 of Blue Jays Nation Radio delivered by our friends at DoorDash where the promo code GAMEDAY25 gets you 25% off and no delivery fees on your first order. Ding dong. Shout out to DoorDash. It's game day. Or it's almost getting to playoffs. You don't want to cook. We're going to have a ton of great stuff going on with DoorDash as we head into the postseason. It is uh, the Jays clinched, baby. Talked about that on the last episode. And now, thanks to a sweep of the Boston Red Sox, Coombsy, they're even closer to clinching home field advantage in round one. This is going to be a good vibes only edition yes. of the show as pretty much everything worked out this weekend. I mean, mm-hmm. the Jays, like you said, just kind of kicked the shit out of the Red Sox. It was just in and out. Three wins, easy peasy, like it has been all year with Boston. Tampa lost two of three games to Houston, which we kind of expected because the Astros are quite good. And then the Oakland A's pulled out a pretty key win over the Mariners on Sunday after Seattle had won the first two games of that series. So where we are standing right now, the possibility of having to go to the Trop for a playoff series is gone. Not happening. But there is still a very faint chance that Seattle could leapfrog the Blue Jays in the standings, but it's looking pretty unlikely. Yeah, it is looking unlikely. The only maybe downside of that... Well, there's a few potential things that could throw a wrench in their plans. Mariners have an easy finish to the season. Four straight against the Tigers. Mm -hmm. And maybe the upside there is one of them is a doubleheader, so it could be harder to win two games in one day maybe. But four games against the Tigers, not great. The Tigers are more or less a junk franchise. And also, just before we get into three up, three down, to keep people current... There's a rain issue in Baltimore right now. The weather might not hold up. And my fear there would be that the Jays, if you're getting to a point where today is rained out, are you nervous about your rotation at all and how it lines up? Or if you have a double header, what are you doing? You're certain Casey Lawrence in one of these? Like that could really mess with the Jays. Yeah, that's kind of an ugly, unfortunate thing. Uh, Baltimore right now is dealing with the results of the hurricane. So there's all kinds of wind and rain and the forecast looks terrible. I'm not really sure what you do in this situation. Like if it's unplayable on Monday and Tuesday, what are you going to do? Make the Jays play on Thursday? It just seems dumb to me. Uh, Quite honestly, it does seem like this, there should have been a little bit of foresight here and maybe they should have just played this game in Toronto where there's a roof. Uh, and Baltimore could have just been the bottom of the order team. Maybe they could have figured something out. I know that they did that a few years ago. Mm-hmm. I think it was when Houston was having their situation. They played at the Trop, something like that. Uh, I don't know. It just seems kind of dumb right now because also from a Blue Jays perspective, like you're rolling into the playoffs nicely here. You don't want to be playing outside in the rain. You don't want someone's foot getting stuck in the dirt and getting injured. It's just not really ideal right now. But for the clinching situations for home field for the Jays, all it would take to guarantee themselves home field in the first round is a win over Baltimore and a loss by Seattle. That's all it takes. So the Mariners essentially have to either sweep Detroit and have the Jays only win one game against Baltimore or they have to win three and uh, have the Jays get swept by the Lose two or three, yeah. Yeah, lose two or three. So it's... uh, Not great. Yeah, exactly. For the Mariners. Great for the, for the, great Mariners, for the Blue yeah. Jays. Uh, and that's because the Jays took matters into their own hand against the Boston Red Sox. They beat the absolute wheels off this team. Um, it's hilarious to see how hard they've dominated them this season, going 16-3 and in their 19 games, outscoring them by 7-D runs. 7-0. 7 I almost said 17 because like my brain can't fully comprehend that they could beat the Red Sox by 70 runs this year. And when you look at the American League standings or the American League wildcard standings it's actually pretty remarkable to see the Jays were 13 games over 500 against Boston and there are 20 or 15 games separating them in the standings if these results would have been flipped if the Red Sox would have had the Jays number this year it would have been Toronto in last and more or less Boston in the wildcard spot well that's pretty much it if you look at it from a Red Sox perspective like they were pretty much fine against everybody else so you look at their record right now on this day they have three games left they're 75 and 84 with a minus 62 run differential which looks pretty bad so you take away all those Jays games and all of a sudden their record is 72 and 68 and they have a plus eight run differential like the Jays just beat the wheels (laughs) off of them all year the Jays beat them harder than they beat the Orioles last year and it was the biggest joke last year it was Baltimore is the automatic win they're yeah you know scoring 10 runs here and there but that was Boston this year and I'll be honest I did not expect that from the Red Sox who were in the ALCS last fall it's 
pretty crazy. Uh, let's get into our three up, three down for this series. Again, delivered by our friends at DoorDash. Alec Manoa goes out and does what, well, we fully expect Alec Manoa to do. And wouldn't it be great if Manoa is one of these guys who just has a knack? And I think we kind of know he does. But when as the games get bigger, he gets better. Because in September, his ERA is remarkable. 0.88 over six starts. He was tremendous against the Red Sox, going six strong without allowing a single earned run. This is an all-time run. This is something we're going to look back on when other Jays pitchers are doing great things in 15, 20, 25 years. It'll be compared to this month by Alec Manoa. Yeah, the way he's going now is he's turning himself into an all-time pitcher for the Blue Jays. Like, someone tweeted out this stat, and I actually did uh, what I usually never do, which is write down who tweeted. And it was Ben Nicholson-Smith who tweeted that um, Alec Manoa's ERA right now is at 2.24 for the season. And it looks like he's not going to pitch again during the regular season. We'll talk about that in two seconds. But So his ERA of 2.24 for the season is the second lowest in Blue Jays history behind Roger Clemens in 19. 1997 so better than anything from Roy Holiday or Dave Steve in Blue Jays history which is nuts it's crazy man um he's not gonna win the Cy Young in you all likelihood so? who do you think it's gonna be that's a really weird one because he's pitched more innings than Dylan Cease and Justin Verlander so Good he point. might get some love for that but he doesn't have the strikeout totals that those two guys do Cease has the better ERA that's a tough one I I, I feel like I could push an argument for Manoa just because I'm a huge homer. But I don't know if the voters will agree. I I, I kind of feel like it's going to go to Verlander. I feel like it is too. There, there's a certain amount of clout that comes along yeah. with it. And it feels like outside of Toronto, it's been Verlander's to lose for a little bit. Yeah. Even though, like you said, a lot of the numbers probably back Dylan Cease. Granted, a Jay won the Cy Young last year, so it's maybe I, maybe I'm just being a little bit too whatever. But but. Robbie Robbie Ray had all of the... If you go and look, he, yeah. was, you know, he, was, he, he led in... He led in strikeouts. He had the strikeouts. He had the wins. He had the innings pitched. He had all the things that voters would care about. Mm -hmm. But then Yankees fans were all worked up that Garrett Cole had some superior underlying numbers, but it wasn't wins above replacement or anything like that. It was weird underlying numbers that they were wanking on about, but whatever. The other note about Manoa that's interesting from this series is John Schneider said that during the celebration, they kind of made the decision that he's not going to be Mm -hmm. lined up for game 162, which is ideal because... Whether you're on the home, or whether you're on the road, or whether you're at home, I think we'd all like to see Manoa pitching in Game One. That gives you like a significant advantage in the series. It feels like at this point, and knock on wood that I don't fucking jinx this. It feels he feels like an automatic win at this point. It really like the way he's pitched in September. Yeah, it, it does feel like he's he's an automatic win kind of start. I would much rather go out on the road and have Manoa than not have Manoa and be playing at the Dome. I think it's just that big of a difference. And I know we debated that on the last podcast, and it's been something that's been talked about for a few weeks. But I, even after just hearing them make that decision, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm good with that. Like, even if home was on the line in game 162, it wouldn't bother me that much. Um, the second up we have, another guy who just continues to play well in September. It's Whit Merrifield. Whit Merrifield is the answer. 7 for 13, two dingers. Um, This guy just can't stop hitting. He's got a 976 OPS in September. Yeah, he goes 7 for 13 with two home runs in the series. It really feels like he's kind of arrived and established himself on the team. And he came at a perfect time because Santiago Espinal got hurt. And I mean, Espinal's hot streak. At, at in terms of batting, kind of slowed down quickly. He was fantastic earlier in the season, slowed down a lot, kind of as predicted. But when he was injured, Whit Merrifield kind of just took the spot and became the everyday second baseman. I mean, there was that hilarious stat for the longest time that was whenever Whit Merrifield's in the lineup, the Jays seemed to manage to lose. Yeah. And now that's changed, and he's been really good. And it's, it's, it's a nice thing to see for this guy because, and I think we touched on this on the last pod too, he came up with Kansas City in 2016 right after their World Series. And since then, the Royals have been terrible. So he's been nowhere near the playoffs in his entire career. And he's an older guy in his 30s already. So now he gets to join the Blue Jays' new team, new situation, team in the mix. And after a really rough start, he just pulled it together when the games mattered the most. And now he's rolling into his first ever playoff appearance on a really good hot streak so those are the exact kind of vibes you want if you're that guy and you've never been in major league playoffs before so let's talk about some roster decisions if santiago espinal is ready to go and healthy does he have an everyday spot on this team no because that's i mean neither of those two guys that have been injured recently guriel or espinal like 
what they've done. I mean, there's just other guys that are contributing, right? Like you can't. Has Gurriel lost his spot to Tapia? I think so. Tapia, really? Tapia gives them an element that they don't really have otherwise. He makes a lot of contact. He's really fast, left-handed bat. Like, I don't know how you take that out of the lineup. I mean, I guess if you're going up against a lefty, you put in Gurriel. Uh, you have a good platoon there. Maybe. Yeah. Or if you're going up. Yeah, you have a good platoon there, I guess. I don't know, just maybe he's a pinch hitter. But option. it's just when we've seen Guriel hot, yeah, it's one of the best hitters in the majors. Like it's he true. has the ability to go on that two week run where he puts up better stats than any hitter in the majors. Is probably the way I should phrase that. I don't want to run the risk of missing out on that kind of a hot streak because it could be series changing, right? Yeah, that's true. I just for me Tapia, that's great. Maybe you use him as like a. You know, it's the eighth inning and the other team goes to a righty reliever and you go, okay, we're up by two. Tapia can run better. Tapia can field better and you make that change. Because Tapia can not field better. His arm's just as good as Guriel, even if he doesn't make as many sexy throws. He has, I think BK pointed this out, he has the hardest throw on record from a Jays outfielder this Which season. Which is shocking. I wouldn't have expected that at all. It's shocking, but like he can clearly throw the ball. He can mm-hmm. field well. Like I would have, yeah, I don't know. The other, the other there. interesting question about the roster thing is, so you have to go down from 28 in September to 26. Mm-hmm. So the Jays have enjoyed the luxury of having all of their, you know, backup outfielders, Jackie Bradley and Bradley Zimmer, both great defensively, speedy guys. And they've also had Gabe Moreno on the roster too, giving them the... the and Otto Lopez. Yeah, the three-catcher thing. Otto Lopez plays a bunch of positions. So when you're in the playoffs, then are you going to do both Bradley Jr. and Zimmer for your situations where you're like, oh, I can, you know have the defense upgrade at the end, I can pinch run here, blah, blah, blah. Or do you want to do three catchers so that you can DH Kirk and then pinch hit somewhere else? I don't know. It's a, it's, it's, there's a, there's, there doesn't seem to be a right answer here. No. I had someone pitch this to me the other day. Is there any way with the defensive struggles from Bo we've seen over the last oh. couple of weeks, do you DH Bo in the playoffs? Ah. Uh. That's uh, the idea was you get Espinal in the lineup. You get Espinal in the lineup as your shortstop and Bo DHs. I wouldn't do it because I think it could rattle Bo. That sends a bad message. I, I, right? I don't think it's worth it. I don't think, I don't think it's worth it either. Bo's defense is questionable, and I think we can all sit here and imagine him making a terrible throw at a bad time, and it's a little jarring to think about. But I think the message that sends and what it would do to his psyche at a key time and cause a. Yeah cause a problem i just don't think you can do it right now i think on paper it would look fine but i think the logistics of doing that it's, it's not the the smartest move um yeah. I, th- I honestly think dude like danny jansen's hitting fine yeah. you, you almost need that dh spot to one of him or kirk yeah and you can also like the jays well, as we know like you, you just said if lord is guriel is not 100 percent but good enough to bat maybe he's the perfect one for the dh yeah. you know there's always george springer like he he always there's always the reality with George Springer and his injuries. Maybe you're better having a JBJ in center field. Yeah. I don't know. There's the, the the Jays have always needed their DH spot, and I don't think the, that changes in the playoffs. The nice part is we aren't sitting here talking about oh who are you going to put at second because Merrifield's <laughs> not hitting. Who knows? Like we're sitting here being like okay, Tapia is playing so well that Guriel might not have a spot, and Merrifield's hitting so well that Espinal doesn't have a spot, and you would love to maybe have one of your catchers DH, but that could kill your DH. Flight flexibility like and if Mourinho goes off the roster then you really don't have any flexibility at catcher if you're DH one like it's a problem of everyone's playing so well and that's great that's what the series against the Red Sox showed is that this team is hot right now yeah and this is what we talked about a while ago after the trade deadline the trade deadline wasn't sexy it wasn't exciting nope. they didn't get a huge name but they lowered the floor of the team they made the bench better yep. and that's where we are right now I mean there there were some ugly moments in August and early September where there were certain guys Whit Merrifield, JBJ, guys that just did not look good. And now everything's come together. Everyone's figured out what their role is. Like, even Bradley Zimmer is contributing. He makes nice catches in the outfield. He does what he does. Like Runs well. Yeah, everyone everyone seems to fit right now. And it's it's just a little unfortunate that they have to go down from 28 to 26 because it feels like John Schneider's got this, this perfect master class going right now with everybody in the right spot. Yeah. Um, I'm going to throw in a bonus up to you. Some of the content we got out of them celebrating in the locker yes. room was very good. The Romano cigarette Photoshop is so hilarious, um, especially because it just looks so real. Like I had to study it for like a few minutes to be like, is that real? There's no way he was smoking a dart, right? It's, that's definitely a real dart. He's holding a pack in his other hands. That's Photoshop. No way. Yeah, 100% it's a real sick. You're not going to Jordan Romano is a Marlboro man. You're full of it. No, it's you're <laughs> full of it. I'm 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 certain it's real. It's um remember a few years ago, Diano Navarro had the uh, he yeah. was smoking a cigar. I mean a little different, but he was smoking a, a cigar and wearing the cop hat. I think if oh, you did he? <laughs> yeah, it's it's real, man. I think 
Okay, yeah, maybe. No, there's no way. If there's anybody yeah, who, it is real. if there's anyone who's allowed on a baseball team to smoke cigarettes, it's your closer. That <laughs> so just just for those who can't see, which is everyone, someone's photoshopped a, a cigarette into Romano as he's pitching, which is fantastic. It looks really funny. Yeah, but it's it's the per- it, it reminds me of. Um, did you ever watch the show Eastbound and Down? Yeah. With um, what's his fucking name? The character's name's Kenny Powers, but I can't remember the name of the actor. It's just, just, just escaping me right now. Danny oh. McBride. Yeah, there you go. And it just kind of reminds me of that energy, which is fantastic. Very funny stuff, dude. I, I still don't believe this it's is gotta real. Be, who's gonna go on? Like the Jays posted that on their Twitter too. Did they? The Jays posted that on, on their official Twitter, and I think they might have taken it down because everybody oh, okay. well, that was, changes things. Everybody was responding with the screenshot of Romano with the dart in his mouth. And I think they took it down because of that, but that's definitely that's definitely a real sag, for sure, for sure. <laughs> it's real. Okay, yeah, maybe it is real, and I'm just stupid, or whatever. You're just not a cigarette connoisseur. No, I'm not a cigarette connoisseur. Even like the pack, like the way the pack is put in his hands, though, just like looks. Can you figure out what 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 kind of darts those are? No, I cannot figure out what kind of. But like, even the way he's holding that pack of darts looks. It like, does look a little weird. It, it looks, looks photoshopped. It, I don't know. It, 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 maybe it's real then. Sure. Um, I guess whoever was next to him in that photo was also smoking a cigar or whatever. So that's fine. Trevor Richards enjoying a nice Budweiser. I think Bradley Zimmer at one point had like four beers in his hands. I love the images that come out of John Schneider's uh, speech was awesome as well. Yeah, he was. Uh, Hazel made did a great interview with him also right before um, uh, when they do kind of the, the, the post game chat. Mm-hmm. And he was excellent in that interview. His speech there was was really good too. They had a lot of funny different moments too. One of the pictures that really stood out to me was just how many different relief pitchers the Jays have who are also members of the Miami Marlins at the same time. There was Zach Pop, Adam Simber, Anthony Bass, um, Jimmy Garcia. Oh, yeah. And I think, did I say Sim- or, uh, Trevor Richards was there as well. Oh, yeah. All five of those guys at the exact same time were on the Marlins. And it's nuts to me that Florida just built Toronto's bullpen for them. Interesting. Really funny. Uh, you mentioned Hazel May. That brings us to our fourth and final up. I know it's three up, three down, but I really want to talk about the Romano dart thing that I thought was fake. Mm-hmm. Um, He's the real dart guy. He is the Fuck real off dart regular guy. dart guy from the Leafs game. Jordan Romano is the real dart guy now. Uh, <laughs> we got the news that Sportsnet's going to be producing the playoff broadcast. And this is something we've complained about in the past, that it's kind of annoying when you go through the whole year with the announcers. You kind of grow to love, even though Buck and Pat say wild stuff sometimes. And I do wish it was going to be be Dan and Buck, not Buck and Pat, but yeah. regardless, it was kind of annoying that you go from like what you're comfortable with, the Jays home broadcast on Sportsnet, to like suddenly getting Harold Reynolds on TBS or whatever we'd get. It was weird, right? And I'm happy that it will now be a Sportsnet produced broadcast. Yeah, that's that's a game changer. You think back to the bat flip or Edwin's walk off in the wild card game, and I don't think either call was bad by any stretch. No, I think both were were really well executed. But, but it wasn't uniquely Blue Jays. No, not at all. There was there was no home field home field to that. There was mm-hmm. like we we all would have loved to have heard whatever the fuck would have come out of Buck's mouth when Jose hit that home run. Right? It would have been awesome. Yeah, I have a funny insane. feeling he would have just yelled. Yeah, it would have been insane. <laughs> His head would have exploded. Like who knows what it would have been. Get up no? ball yeah. like if it was that or if it would have been something goofy. And then also Dan Shulman, he's gonna be on the ESPN radio for all Jays games in the playoffs. It's significantly better. I remember during the <laughs> the playoffs in twenty fifteen, the uh, Fox One crew, they just zeroed in on and focused on Troy Tulowitzki using this old glove. And they must have yeah. talked about it ten times throughout the series, and it's like, shut up about this. Who cares? There's more to this team than Troy Tulowitzki having a glove from 2005. But that's what's annoying about those national broadcasts, right? Is they don't pay attention to your team all season. Then when they do get there, they have like their eight stories that some whatever producer throws in front of them or that they uncover and they ride with that for a whole playoff series. So it'll be great to have Buck, Pat, and Hazel on the broadcast uh, throughout the playoffs. I have another kind of side theory about this. Does this at all increase the value the Jays, Rogers specifically, I should say, gets out of a long playoff run. If they know going forward for the next five years that they get to produce their own playoff broadcast, sell ads in the playoff broadcast, how much is that worth to them? This comes from a podcast I was doing earlier today where we were talking about Shohei Otani being a free agent in whatever, 
a calendar year from now, more or less. And it was like, oh, like, would Rogers really shell out $50 million for Shohei Otani? And I was just thinking, like, jersey sales, huge. But also, if Otani gives you that much of a better chance of reaching a World Series, and now reaching a World Series for Rogers not only means ticket revenue for rounds one, two, three, and then a World Series, but also more TV revenue from those rounds. I don't know how the deal worked with Fox and all that, but you can now sell in-game ads, and that has to be worth something. Yeah, I think just creating the, the superior experience with the broadcasters yeah. you like, because what Rogers is doing with, with, with situations like this is um, when you have these games, it becomes easier to sell your own packages, whether you're selling you know, cable packages that feature all the Sportsnet channels, whether you're selling yeah. Sportsnet Now or Sportsnet Go or whatever the fuck it's called. Um, when you're selling all of that stuff, just the more you can horizontally integrate all of your own content together, mm -hmm. the better it is for you to package and sell it. So it makes a lot of sense for the, just to create that product yourself rather than just throwing on Sportsnet West. Oh, here's Fox's, you know, Blue right. Jays. I know the ads and all that in between Sports. innings stays the same because Sportsnet owns those. But I just kind of thought, is this a way for them to make more revenue and does it at all change the budget available to them when it comes to spending on players? That was my only thing. I think, yeah, I think it, I think, I think it, it is might. all positive. It's yeah. you, you can, you can make this more of a pro Jays broadcast, which I think is ideal too. You can just, cause the, the Fox Sports one or the TBS objective is just to cover the playoff games and create something that sells them talking about sports with mm -hmm. Rogers, you're selling the Blue Jays as a brand in total. And that goes beyond just the team. That's the broadcast crew. That's the in-game media. That's the things they talk about. Yep. And if they have control over it and they can create a product they believe is superior, then it is ultimately better for the Blue Jays. Uh, the down from this series against the Red Sox, um, I did, like nothing really, right, other than the Gosman thing. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, I, I couldn't think of anything to complain about other than, I mean, this isn't really complaining. This is just like a thing that happened, yeah. which is Gosman got lifted after three innings because he had a little a little slit on his middle finger, a little cut. But apparently they're going to do something to it, and he's going to be fine. He's going to undergo, like, more laser shit than he usually does or something like that. They're going to put Gorilla Glue on the top of his, <laughs> I don't know, he's going to dip his hand in, like, uh. I don't know what, what they're doing. I, I have no idea what the science is behind that. Neither but do I. I'm not particularly worried about it. Kevin Gosman said earlier in the season he likes having blisters on his fingers, so this isn't an Aaron Sanchez situation where he, like, picked up a suitcase the wrong way and ripped his finger a little bit, and he's never going to pitch again. So I think everything's going to be fine. And the other good thing that came out of Gosman not pitching was Zach, Zach Pop's master class in that game. It was he unreal. Made, like, three good defensive plays, the one behind the back thing, and he also didn't change his face, facial expression at all. It was, yeah. a, it was a pretty cool thing to watch. Pop pitched really, really well. Um, the only thing I was upset about is that they took out Gosman at four strikeouts, and I had him over five and a half, and that didn't hit. But no one listening to this really cares about that. Pop was great, went too strong, struck out two, didn't allow a hit or a walk. So that was all fine and dandy. The bullpen as a whole was you know, fine in that game as yep. well. Romano picked up his 36th save, and the Jays walked away with a sweep over the Boston Red Sox. We didn't mention, but you say Kikuchi picked up a save in this series. He did. Um, that was great. Yeah, it was came in the 10 nothing win. Uh, no, sorry, it was in the first win of the year. 9 nothing. The 9 nothing win, my bad. Um, and after Manoa went 6, Kikuchi comes in and goes 3, strikes out 5, only allows 2 base runners. Eh? It's probably his best appearance of the season. Like if they're Probably um, not that far off. Like he had that one start like right when he came back the first time from being yeah. on the IL with shittiness. Um, he came back and like pitched against Detroit, I think it was, right? And I was like, "Holy shit, that was unreal." Um, yeah, he went five innings against Detroit and only allowed one earned run, struck out five. That start was good, but this one's up there for sure. Yeah, Kikuchi did his best to yeah. audition for a playoff role. I really don't think he's going to be on the postseason roster, despite the fact they only have one left-handed pitcher. I'd be shocked if Kikuchi was on the roster, though. Uh, Kikuchi or Mitch White? Well, even then, like, I don't even know if Mitch White's going to be there. You got the, because um, you can have a maximum of 13 pitchers, and they're going to have the four starters, of course. Yeah. So there's going to be Manoa, there's going to be Gosman, there's going to be Stripling, there's going to be um, Barrio. So that's four for sure. Yep. And then you have the obvious relievers, which are, you know, Romano, uh, Garcia, Bass, Meza. Richards. Richards. You're going to have Phelps. You're going to have Simber. So that's seven guys right there. That's 11 pitchers already. You're only allowed to have 13. So you're like, are you going to put Kikuchi on there instead of like Zach Pop? Maybe. 
unlikely. Uh, Do you want the lefty though, right? It's a possibility. I mean, it. I, I'd, I'd be a little surprised, but I could understand the yeah. logic if they did go with it. I don't see any point for Mitch White there. I think no. at this point, Jose Barrios, oddly enough, might be your mop-up guy if if it gets to that. So you're in game two and Stripling's pitching and mm. things don't go all that well, then, or vice versa, you... Yeah. Well, know. if you get to a point where it's best of sevens, then oh, yeah, you need Barrios. But early on, you're right. Barrios can probably be your mop up guy behind Gosman, Manoa, and Stripling. And yeah, if we're talking wild card round, I don't know. I might keep Kikuchi just to have that extra lefty arm that can eat innings. Like if you get up, let's say you get up on the Mariners by six. And you're like, eh, let's save our relievers <laughs> Could here. Could you imagine if they brought Kikuchi into a playoff game that they were up six and he just like walked four guys? No, okay, I'm done with this exercise. <laughs> yeah, now. let's let's, yeah, stop let's move on. About this. No more. Who cares if Kikuchi's on the postseason roster? That's this is the a point. good vibes only. Podcast. Yeah, good vibes only podcast. Really living up to that. Uh, around the American League, we talked about the Rays, talked about Seattle. Both those series broke really well. The Jays' magic number to clinch home field is now two, and with that, we will get set for the series against the Baltimore Orioles. All right. Three games against the Orioles to end the season. Um, since I know everyone loves when I talk about my bets at the beginning of the year, I put a wager on the Jays to finish the season with over 92 and a half wins. They're at 90. They have three games to go. I need them wow. to sweep the Orioles for my futures bet to cash. And I have made the promise to them that if they do it, I will take all of my winnings and put it on them to win the World Series. If they come through for me with a sweep, I will bet on them heavily to win the World Series. If they do sweep the series also, this is an interesting fun fact, they would finish 93-69, and 69, which is the exact same record the 2015 team had. That's inter- at, But that yeah, team won the division. That team won Hello. the division. So 93 at wins. 93 and yeah. 69. 93 wins, and they won the division by like five games. Like they were, the 2015 team was up on the Yankees by quite a bit by the end of that year. So yeah. it's, it's nuts to think that you could win the American League East with 93 games. Or 93 wins? That's, that's, yeah, that that's does seem crazy. weird. I, 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 in my head, for some reason, thought that the 2015 team was closer to 100 wins. I thought they were up at like yeah, me 99 too. for some reason. Oh, we just have such a positive outlook on that team in general, though, right? Like, I mean, we loved them. Yeah. It's the nostalgia have, that kicks in. It's almost like none yeah. of the losses ever happened. It's like, yeah. oh, they lost a game? No, they didn't. <laughs> I've almost like blacked out the whole beginning of that year when it like wasn't going all that great. Like, I basically don't remember anything until August. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it really does feel like it was like two different seasons. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's get into this courtesy of our friends over at Points Bet Canada. The Jays tonight against the Orioles are minus 120, but there might not be a baseball game tonight, Coomzy. Uh The weather forecast in Baltimore looks straight up terrible. Um, Rob Longley was tweeting about it earlier today. Like it's... Yeah, it looks really bad. It's yeah. just... It's just I'm I'm watching the image that Blue Jays weather on Twitter has put up. This is a great account to follow. Uh, yeah, they're just showing the green and the yellow, which represents the water flying all over Baltimore. It's it's everywhere. I I really do think if they want to get this in, they need to just do it in Toronto, where there's a fucking roof, and just let Baltimore be the bottom of the inning team. Figure out the money. I don't know. So, yeah, that would probably be the only way they can. It looks like at least because it's a hur- it's all due to Hurricane Ian. It's not like this is just like a little thunderstorm no. rolling in that's gonna blow away. Like there's a legit chance the weather is not good in Baltimore for a, a few days here. So could you have these teams if you make the call tonight? Say hey, we're not playing tonight. Instead, you guys are getting back on a plane going to Toronto. It's a quick flight. It's a quick flight, and we're gonna do one game on Tuesday and a doubleheader Thursday. And it's easier to get... Oh, sorry, Tuesday and then doubleheader Wednesday. Yeah, right? doubleheader Tuesday, game on Wednesday. It's or easier that. to cross the border now because they don't have the Vax thing anymore. We're into October. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a much simpler process to just jump on a flight and go to Toronto. I think that's the easiest thing to do. But again, I'm coming from a wildly Blue Jays um, yeah. uh, bias like, Why should the Orioles care? I don't know. I guess, like, they don't want to... On the smaller details, like does your training staff want to pack up and go for a road trip? Do your players want to go back on the road? Like all this well, stuff. Then forfeit the games then. Well, like what? Yeah, <laughs> what other choice do you have? You can't forfeit Major League Baseball games. So, can you? What, what's the protocol with that? Do you know? I have, no I have, I have no idea either. We should have looked into that. We should have. Um, like I would imagine that the forfeiting team, you just what get like a three nothing win or something. The Jays would get a three nothing win. What would that do to their Pythag WL? Get a bunch of three nothing wins there against the Orioles to end the season. Improves their run differential. 
Forfeited games are scored. This is from uh, rookieroad.com, and it's the first thing that pops up when I Google MLB forfeit rules. So it's got to be right. It's got to be the correct thing. Um, Forfeited games are scored based on the number of innings that would have been played. Therefore, every MLB game would be 9 nothing. That would be huge for the the run differential. 27 added runs for the Jays and zero against. I don't know if I even trust this website, though. (laughs) Maybe I'll use Wikipedia. Wikipedia nope. is usually, they're usually right with this kind of thing. Uh, yeah, the scores recorded is 9 nothing. so that weird Little League website had it right. Good on So it. it's just like a nice game against the Red Sox. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, so maybe maybe that's the solution. The J- but again, do you not want the... Is it... Their bats are so hot, do you want them to go four days without baseball? No, I don't think I would. Like, I that's, that's why I do think the ideal thing is just bring it back to Toronto. They get to sit there, feel cozy, and warm themselves up for this this playoff series. I don't think, given how good the vibes were against the Sox, I don't think sitting down for a week is, is, is the best thing possible. And you can't make, like, if this gets pushed a day or two days, and you're still in Baltimore, what are you going to do? Be like, oh, it's a doubleheader on Thursday to finish this series. Like that's insane. That's insane. That's not fair. Like it's not fair to the Jays. You'd have to push the wild card series, and they won't want to do that because it's no. lined up on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday right now. So yeah, I mean, I, I'm 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 not seeing any better solution than just moving it to Toronto. So I'm going to write an, an email to the league and say, look, easy solution, done. Neutral site, go to Dunedin. It's like a longer flight. It's like more <laughs> of a pain in the ass for everyone. Oh, someone suggested. Uh, I retweeted the Blue Jays weather thing and saw uh, uh, the good sun. On, on Twitter replied, I would think they moved to a neutral site before playing in Toronto. Could play down at the Trop. I think he's being sarcastic and teasing me. Yeah. And I just said no in all caps. Uh, if this game does go on and the Jays do play ball, it's Barrios versus Dean Kramer, uh, Mitch White versus Mike Bowman, and then Wednesday? Probably Kikuchi. Okay. As probably a, Kikuchi. And probably Kikuchi versus, I don't know, well, somebody else on the, on the Orioles? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I saw the Orioles shut down Felix Bautista for the year. Yeah, so that's... um. That's a positive for the Jays. The yeah. Orioles will be a little bit easier to face. They don't have their fireball closer. Yep. Uh, so hopefully the Jays can come out of this thing with a sweep. We are going to do a series preview on Thursday, correct? We are, yeah. Okay. So that'll be uh, what's next up for Blue Jays Nation Radio. Shout out to our friends at DoorDash and Points Bet Canada. Uh, we are either going to just sit and watch the Weather Network all night or we'll watch the Blue Jays play the Orioles. Coomsey, either way, we'll have a good time. Yeah, we will. We always love watching baseball and or the weather. That's our passion. Thanks for tuning in to Blue Jays Nation Radio, a member of the Nation Network of Podcasts and delivered by DoorDash. Don't forget to like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts from to never miss an episode.